What's up, Vinyl Community? It's your boy Chris coming at you for the first time in a long time for the Man Cave. Cheers to you guys on this wonderful uh, Friday afternoon. Courtesy of my Elysian Space Dust IPA. Very tasty. Um, so, as you guys will see in a lot of the photos that are accompanied this video, um, uh, all five or six of you that still watch this channel, um, uh, took the family down to Disney. Uh, the way that my, fa my my daughter's school system has worked things out here <laughs> over the past year is that instead of a long summer vacation, there are breaks during the year. A, a lot of your school systems might have done this for a while, but for my school system, it's new. For us, you know, school knocked out in May. We went back in September when I was in school. Uh, now it's completely different and there's one week breaks throughout the year. So um, my daughter had what was, uh, I guess, called her spring break um, last week. So uh, decided what better time than ever, me and my wife decided to take our daughter, uh, Ramona, who you guys have seen fluently on this channel, frequently on this channel, excuse me, uh, down to Disney World because she's almost eight years old. She loves roller coasters. She loves rides. She likes amusement parks. What better time than now? So uh, we decided to go ahead and do that. Booked a hotel, uh, spent the first few days in Tampa uh, visiting our newly born uh, nephew because uh, our my wife's brother lives and his wife live in Tampa. So we spent the first couple of days there visiting them and then headed up to Orlando where we spent the rest of the time. We hit Magic Kingdom, uh, Animal Kingdom, and Epcot. Uh, Epcot was my favorite. Uh, as a kid, I went to Epcot and I didn't think it was that fun, but... You go as an adult and, you know, you got all the countries laid out, you know, like you got the UK and you got France and Japan and Morocco and, and they got all the regional food and they got the regional drinks, excuse me. And as you go back, you go back as an adult and it's just a lot more fun because you can partake in that stuff a whole lot more, kind of playing your own pace. But, um, Thoroughly enjoyed the uh, the week. Uh, was very sad to come back. Um, but while I was there, I did hit one record store. Wanted to hit more than one record store, but to be honest with you, I went to this record store and I spent enough money to where, I honestly, didn't need to go to another record store, at least not in my opinion. But um, I get there and we go digging and I'm looking around and the first thing that I come to is a record that I've owned before, but uh, not as clean as this copy. It's um, Brass with Voices by Donald Byrd on Blue Note. It's not my favorite Donald Byrd record. Let's get that record. Let's get that glare out of there if we can. It's not my favorite Donald Byrd record, but it's a very interesting Donald record. Donald Byrd record is called I'm Trying to Get Home. And uh, the first copy that I pulled was $25. They had it listed as VG minus. I get to the counter and the guy tells me, hey, you know, we got a cleaner copy of this. I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. And uh, he puts this one in my hand. It's another $20, cost me 45. No big deal, cool. Always, I'm all about having the cleanest copy I can get, Donald Bird. It's a phenomenal record. Uh, like I said, it's not, you know, among my absolute favorites, but if I can get a Donald Bird on a Blue Note, I'm very happy. And so then I go digging around the bins or whatever, and uh, I find an album I've owned several copies of uh, throughout the years, but tra probably, you know, traded for jazz or whatever I was into at the moment. It's uh, Strange Days by The Doors. Uh, love the album. I've always loved the album, you know, and uh, just throughout the years, I've always, you know, traded it for jazz or whatever. I always knew it was an album I could reacquire. But, uh, you know, instead of the $5, I think it cost me the first time I bought it. Now it's $25. But uh, thoroughly enjoy the album. I've always loved it. But uh, it's extremely clean. It'll probably be the copy that I keep. There's no reason to trade them around anymore. I've got most of the jazz that my heart is after. Most of it. I mean, I still want stuff. Don't get it twisted. But, you know, I'll come up with something. But got a few on the way here shortly. I mean, you know, stay tuned. I'm trying my best to do more videos. Uh, so as I look around and then I get to the wall 
on the section of the shop above the uh, new releases and everything, and I get to an album that I already owned, a song from my father by uh, Horace Silver. You don't get too much better of a jazz album than song from my father by Horace Silver, at least not in my opinion. Horace's dad on the cover, looking cool as hell, hat, cigar, cool as hell, and the music is even better than the cover is. But um, you guys, uh, if you've been following me long enough, can remember the story that I told about the first time I grabbed this album. Uh, first time I grabbed this album was for $12 in an antique store. They clearly didn't know what they had. No big deal. I took advantage, grabbed it. It's been my copy for, let's call it, eight, nine, hell, maybe even 10 years. And um, until I grabbed this bad boy, and then keep in mind, I still have that copy of uh, you know, the $12 copy, but I'll probably get rid of it, to be completely honest with you. This is probably going to be my new forever copy. Uh, cover is super sweet, super clean. Blue note, splat out. Um, absolutely love the album. It's hard to find. I, I mean, it's just really hard to find too many jazz albums that I like better than I like that one. And, and listen, then I pull more frequently, I mean. And so I look around a little bit longer and I find on the wall behind the counter, the Billy Mitchell Quintet, A Little Juicy, featuring Thad Jones' trumpet. Okay, so this is not gonna be, oh my God, your most popular jazz album. Uh, but if you know, you know. But for me, what's cool about this one, and by the way, it's a promo copy, Splatter. For me, what is um, awesome about this one is a couple of years ago, last year, two years, I don't know, ever since 2020, it just feels like they're all just blended into one year. But anyway, uh, my boy Marcus, um, who you guys have heard me reference on this channel quite a few times, uh, sent me a copy of this album that he had scored at a local record store. But when the package got here, this package was split down uh, the spine or whatever, if you have will, if you have, you know, whatever. And um, opened it up. Everything was intact except for the record for this album was missing. So I've had just the sleeve of this album for a couple years now. And it's been pissing me off every time I flip through the shelves. Nothing my boy Marcus did wrong. He always packages first class. It's a, it's a, it's a postage thing. I mean, and what are you going to do? So I've had just the cover. And to be honest with you, I was always hoping to come across a record only whatever that I could score for 20 bucks. So that's what I was hoping for, but it wasn't gonna happen. Let's just call it what it is. It never happens. I got a bunch of uh, jacket only and I've got a bunch of record only and it never happens. It just doesn't, guys. I mean, I'm just calling it what it is. If you've got those in your collection, chances are you are never gonna find that circumstance to line up for you. And just being honest with you, so if you've got them, I ain't saying give up hope. I'm saying just go get yourself a full copy. That's what I'm saying. But uh, very happy to have this. This bitch is minty. Uh, it looks like it's never been spun. Uh, again, it's promo copy. I mean, I couldn't be happier to have it. I'm thrilled. Uh, first person that I texted about it was my boy Marcus. Cheers to you, buddy, if you're watching very first person to let him know that hey man finally got a complete copy wish i could have filled it in with a 20 dollar record only but i couldn't and it is what it is maybe if i waited another 30 years you know. and then i go looking on the wall um behind uh, the the front desk again scattering you know, you know moving around with my eyes trying to see what else i can find up there and i find this beautiful fucker that's a Run DMC. Uh, that's their debut. And usually when you find hip hop, especially old hip hop, it's beat to hell because it belonged to DJs. And they scratched and they spun and spun and scratched and scratched and spun and spun and scratched, scratch, 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 scratch. And so the records are usually shit. And the records and the covers are usually shittier. Not this time. This bad boy is as close to near mint as I can think of. And when I saw it up there, it was up there and it was sitting next to LL Cool J's All World. And I like LL Cool J's All World, but not as much as I like Run DMC's debut. So I uh, 
politely asked for the gentleman from the counter to hand this to me so that I could observe it and look at it and, uh, and determine again, you know, it's cleanliness and everything. And, uh, it's as perfect as described. And this is a, for, this is forever. This is a keeper. This is never going anywhere because you're not, you're not going to find it cleaner than this. So, you know, frequently listed in, you know, Rolling Stones, 500 greatest albums of all time, basically every list that ever comes out. Not that I give much stock to Rolling Stone, really, but it's still cool. Um, and I love the album. I always have. So, uh, Love Run DMC, one of the greatest. Uh, and they're, the, they're the pioneer duo. They're pioneers of hip hop. I mean, if you're a hip hop fan like myself, how can you, how can you not dig Run DMC? So... Again, atten uh, intended to go to more record stores than just the donut shop, but um, I spent just to tell you guys, not it's three hundred. I spent three hundred forty dollars, and I wanted to make sure I had as much money as I could to make sure my daughter had as much fun as she could have. So that was it. It's like okay, just the donut shop, no big deal. Next time I come to Orlando, we'll go to more shops. But um, it was great, great trip. It, it was a very necessary. For myself and my little family to, to 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 rewind, get a fresh start. Um, you know, it was nice to, to 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 meet my new nephew, to visit family, and it was extremely nice to uh, spend my time with my little family, and uh, it was wonderful. And uh, you know, it was packed. It was tons of people, but it was great because I was with you know my favorite people in the entire world. So, for those of you watching. Uh, I wanted to show you this in particular because I feel like I scored a nice handful of great records. But uh, I'm going to try my best to do more videos. going to try my best. I know I've been kind of out away for, the, for, for a while now. And I'm going to try my best to do more videos for the three or four of you that still watch. And um, hey, I hope you're all having a great week. Uh, the weather's getting nicer and nicer down here in South Carolina. I don't want to brag too much because where you're from, the weather might still be shit. I don't know. But uh, it's gorgeous here. And uh, spend your weekend spending some tunes, having some drinks, hanging out with some friends, uh, spending some time with your kids. Uh, nothing better than that. And uh, until next time, until next video, and again, it'll be soon. Keep dropping that needle, you guys.